I'll go with you, Bill. Nope. Did you ever see a man with a space scalp, Charlie? No. You better stay here in case it's a trick. You and Duke could be needed. Well, if you need any help, just call me. Yeah, I will. Mr. Hawks, this may be the last chance I'll have to be with Mary. I'm an old, old man. We never had children. There's no one else to live for. You'll be safe, Mr. Budgeon. They wouldn't dare attack with a priest along. Can't let you go, Father. Believe me, I prefer not to. Simply that I must. I'm not trying to be brave, Bill. Mr. Budgeon will do everything he can to bring your wife back. her nigh on to 50 years. All right, Mr. Budgeon. Better not. They want us to keep our distance. Mary! Mary, are you all right, Mary? Yes, Matthew. Yes, I, I am. They've been... Very gentle and polite to me so far. What do they want, Mrs. Budgeon? Do you know? Well, we were off all night with them drawing things on the ground and, and pointing and, and grunting and making signs. You see, this boy is sick. His name's Matina. He's the chief's son. They want your help. We'll give them help if we can. They want you to take him to Wayne City see the doctor there. And then after he's cured, and you bring him back safe, then they'll set me free. Why do they have to hold her? Won't they trust us? If you were an Indian father, would you trust a white man? Mr. Hawk, you ain't got no choice. It don't seem like to me. What's wrong with the boy, Mrs. Budgeon? Well, he, he don't seem sick to me. Nothing that uh, vinegar and molasses won't cure. Mary, listen, Mary. Will they take me instead of you? Please, Mary. Oh, mercy me. I never heard such goings on. You'd think these Indians were torturing me or, or something. Charlie? Yeah? Right into Wayne City, there's a doctor there. Bring him back, will you? All right. What's this all about, Bill? Well, that any boy's sick, and they want him cured. Till he is, they're gonna hold Mrs. Budgeon. Why do they pick on an old lady like her? Why don't they go to Wayne City and get somebody important? You know as well as I do, Charlie, that these Indians honor old people. To them, there's no one more important. I guess they figure we think the same way. And Duke, don't tell that doctor there's an Indian. Tell him it's one of us. Right. Father Bernard? Lawrence. Right. I brought your friend. His name is Mitsina. How do you do? I sure am glad to meet you. Well, 
Come on. Larry! Come here. Excuse me, Father. If I ever catch you going near that Indian again, I'll thrash you. Well, I was just making friends, Uncle Ben. I've never met an Indian before. Get on that wagon and stay there. I don't even want you near that filth, do you hear? I don't even want you near him. Mr. Budgeon, I don't think this is going to be any problem at all. It ain't serious? Seems like a rash here and there. It might have come from a fever, but that's gone. The doctor will fix you up in no time at all. Mr. Budgeon, let's get ready to roll. Now, we're all going to be friends, Miss Cena. It isn't much of a timepiece, but uh, if you want it. Go on. <laughs> Take it. You better try to get some sleep, Father. You didn't get much last night. Oh, I don't need much sleep, Charlie. Priests don't. At least, some priests. Why did you become a priest? Mind if I ask? Because I love God, that's why. I know a lot of people love God in their own way. They don't become priests. Why did you? Out of a need to be of real use, I think. Have you always felt that way? No. My family wasn't to... Uh, isn't particularly religious. Oh, well, they're very good people. And before the war, very successful plantation people in Georgia. Was it because what the war did to the plantations? <laughs> you underestimate me. I had no right to ask in the first place. But you're the first priest I had the nerve to ask. Sorry, I'm just a little curious, I guess. My father was a doctor, a man of service. I suppose it was from him I got the urge to be of some use. He had a small hospital of his own on the plantation. In it, he kept only the very old sick people, the hopelessly crippled, the dying. The others he treated at their houses. One night, I was the only one nearby. A kerosene lamp was overturned. The little hospital caught fire. In no time at all, there was a wall of flame between me and the... and the one room where the sick lay. I couldn't get to them. I could only hear them. The cries of the helpless calling to be saved, and... I was powerless to go to them. Even after they were all dead, I kept hearing those voices. Months later, I went away and became a priest. place like my place, Larry. Like I told your ma back in St. Louis, before she died. I need a good man to take over one of these days. <laughs> uh, once you set eyes on it, you won't regret coming. How come you never got married and had a family of your own, Uncle Ben? Because I live in Wayne City. And I've seen what can happen. I've seen my friends lose their families to those Indians. 
And I never had much of a mind about raising a family just for slaughter. You know, you know, I never really have seen an Indian before this morning, Uncle Ben. If I had my way, he'd be your last. I've seen too many. You keep away from him. Oh, but he couldn't have anything to do with those other Indians you were talking about. I said keep away from him. Yes, Uncle Ben. <laughs> He's writing in now. Over here. Hello, this is Dr. Porter. Glad that you're here, Doctor. Howdy. How are you? Where's the sick woman? Over this way. What does he mean, sick woman? There ain't no. The main thing is the doctor's here, Mr. Huh? Budgeon. Come on. Doc. Oh, Mr. Gill. Nice to see you back. Where's that lad you brought back from the east? Right here. Larry, this is Dr. Porter. How do you do, sir? Hmm. Might thin for a gill. We'll make a man of him. All right. All right, where is she? Inside. What kind of a trick is this? That boy needs help. He's not going to get any help from me. Old woman's life depends on you. This man's wife. There isn't a family in town hasn't lost someone to those devils. How do you suppose it'll look if it got back that I took care of one of them? What are you? If you're not a doctor, what are you? A human being. Not an Indian, not a white man, but a human being created in the image of our Lord lies in there in need of your help. How can you turn your back? If you won't do it, for his sake, and for this old man. They're holding his wife, and she won't be released until that Indian boy is returned to them, cured. If you refuse, you will have murdered her. Go ahead, Doc. I'll explain in town. Remind me not to tangle with you, Father. train isn't coming into Wayne City. Not with him in it. And that's final. We're going in. If you do, we'll fire on you if we have to. What's the matter with him? He's a Lazar. Well, what's that mean, Doc? A leper. <gasps> leper? He's got leprosy. do something. They've got my wife. There's nothing anybody can do. It's incurable. Now let go of my arm. He don't 
don't understand. It's Mary. They've got my Mary. I know. I'm sorry. Oh, Mr. Hawks, there don't seem to be much choice. Uh, sorry, Mr. Bludgeon, but, well, we're going to have to abandon him. Since when did you start giving orders around here, Gil? You heard the doctor yourself. This wagon train ain't allowed in Wayne City with that Indian along. Mr. Hawks? I don't know. I'll think of something. What about Father Bernard? I'll go get him. Now, wait a minute, Charlie. Leave him alone. Father. I am not worthy to be called Father. Please help me. I'm so scared. Pray for me, Father. It is I who is in need of your prayers. And that's what happened last time in Wayne City. And what I told you folks, is only what I've seen with my own eyes. And what I heard is fearful enough, <laughs> even if it were only half true. Larry, where are you going? Well, get a cooking fire going, Uncle Ben. Get myself some wood and get myself some hot food for breakfast. You stay right here. We got no time for coddling our stomachs. You'll get plenty of hot food when you get back into Wayne City. Now, I don't know about you folks, but no Indians keeping me from going wherever I see fit. You think that Indian can stomach my cooking? You'd be surprised, Charlie. I'll take it to him. Bill. Please let me take it. All right, Father. thing to do, Father. If there's anyone on the train that would approach him without fear. I'm not anyone. I'm supposed to be a priest. A priest is a human being, Father. So is he. This isn't the first time it's happened, Bill. I failed then. Does I fail now? What do you mean by that? Fire in the hospital? Charlie told me. What he didn't tell you was the truth. I ran from the hospital. Fear, disgust. Those people could have been saved. But I turned my back and ran. You were young then. Making excuses doesn't change the truth. sight of blood, any suffering, has always frightened me. I'm a coward. And here, a thousand miles away, many years later, in the wilderness, the Lord seeks me out and reveals me once again for, for what I really am. Those cries still sound through the fire, shrieking my shame and my weakness. I'm not fit to be a priest, though. Father, you know more about these things than I do. But doesn't the Lord call the weak, too? And couldn't their victories be the greater ones? Oh, 
will you do with Metzina? I don't know, Father. Can't stay with us. Can't send him back to his people. I don't know. All right. It's agreed, then. If Hawks and his men want to stay with this Indian, huh, let them. There ain't no reason why we should. Now, you men gather your families and your belongings together, and we'll all head into Wayne City on our own. Now, talk to the others. Anybody else wants to can. and kill that priest while you're trying to do it? All right. So maybe that priest gets killed. So maybe your Mrs. Budgeon gets killed. It's two people. Do you know what'll happen if that Indian gets back to his people? There'll be a raid. Yeah, on my town, like there was two years ago. And then, and then there won't be only two people killed. No. no, there'll be hundreds. White people, yeah, like me. Like you. And you, and you it. Yeah, and you. If you are a man. Duke! He's right. I'll have to go after him. What are you all waiting for? Mr. Hawks? I'm sorry. It's all right, Larry. I don't think your uncle meant to hurt you. Fear does bad things to people, even good ones. only through these hills. They won't be there before nightfall. Only a fool to take any other way at night. Uh, we're gonna have to get there before they do and head them off. All right. But it ain't an easy climb. That Indian was bleeding pretty bad, Bill. I don't think he'll last tonight. That's what I'm afraid of, Duke.
How great are thy words, O Lord. Thou hast made all things in wisdom. They'll have to come this way. All right, we'll wait here. One thing I want you to understand, Gil. We're here to take him alive. Sure. We can't take him alive, Bill. What then? I don't know, Duke. If he dies, we're in trouble. If he lives, we're in trouble. by morning, Gil. Uh, I ain't risking my neck. Go down there in the dark. Either of you boys want to go? Mm. We'll wait till morning. Pretty obvious what he wants. Boy could be dead by morning, Duke. So could the father. Come on, we're going after him. I'm ready. Mr. Hawks. What is it, Larry? When we get to Wayne City, Mr. Hawks, could I go on with you in the wagon train? Maybe your Uncle Ben will have something to say about that. I don't want to stay with him. Not after this. You want to go back home? Well, there's nobody there anymore. Ma died. That's why Uncle Ben came east to fetch me. I want to go with you. Larry! Come here. Talk about it in the morning. know is that four months ago a landslide blocked the trail. They'll see it for themselves in an hour. But by that time, you and I will be taking a little ride. We'll be in Wayne City before morning. Uh, that was good news. What good news? Well, I, I can find that Indian in no time. Thank you for giving my life back to me. Now, 
try to get some sleep. No harm will come to you. Well, come on, Larry, we're leaving. It looks as if the wagon train can go into Wayne City after all. Now, the best thing would be for Larry and me to go in and ahead, give the word, and we'll meet you there. Oh, and you're welcome to the farm for a good feed. Come on, Larry. I said, come on. I'm not coming. What do you mean, you ain't coming? He's not going straight to Wayne City. He's going to kill that Indian boy first. He's going to murder him. I'll get up on your horse. Good. Well, it looks like that's the end of that. Yeah, we'll have to go back, cut around, get on top of it some way. Come on, let's go. happen then? They'll take one look at him and there'll be a raid on Wayne City. I can't abandon him. Why not? You can't let him go back to the wagon train and you can't let him go back to his own people. He's gonna die anyway from that, 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 that sickness. Not for many years. Life, even one day's life, is a gift from God. No man has a right to shorten that gift. Well, what about our lives? You let him go, you'll be shortening a lot of people's lives. I must do what I must do. And I must do what I must do. What good will killing him do? He'll be missed. Sooner or later, they'd find the body. I bury him. The wagon train would get into Wayne City. We'd send for help. Troops had come. We'd be ready for those Indians even before the time they missed him. And you'll have to kill me too, Mr. Gill. Get away from him. No. No, I said move away from him. No. No, I said move away from him. <sighs> I said, get out of the way! son, if I had to do it. I was going to do it. I was going to shoot him anyway.
morning, I'm taking him back to his people. It's the only way. And I'm going to stay with them. In exchange for Mrs. Budgeon? Father, I can't let you do that. No. Not in exchange for Mrs. Budgeon. I'm sure that Mancina will see that they let her go anyway. For a selfish reason. See, he only has a few years to live. He will die in loneliness and more pain than the human mind can imagine. He will need a priest. Perhaps in that time, I may be able to teach him of the infinite love of God, a love which is to be taken even in the midst of his suffering. How about your parish, Father? A lot of people will be waiting for you. They will find a priest. I've found my parish. Thank you.